We are halfway through 2020 and it is turning out to be one of the craziest years I think we've ever seen, at least in my lifetime. And I just uh, turned 50 this year. I mean, it is just out of control what's been happening and cybersecurity is no different. So I just wanted to take a moment to create a video on the top threats that organizations need to be aware of as we continue to finish out 2020. Because let's face it, with everything that's happened and a lot of the changes that organizations have made where security hasn't been a priority or has taken a back seat, the threats are on the rise. Everyone keeps saying this is the year of the big one. This is the year where we have massive cyber attacks like we've never seen before. And I can't really differ too much from that because unfortunately we've set ourselves up for a situation where a lot of companies have focused on supporting remote workforce. They haven't focused on security. They've moved servers to the internet. They're allowing users to utilize endpoints that aren't secure. And there are a lot of threats that are out there. So I just wanted to lay down the top five threats that you and your organization need to be aware of as we finish up the second half of 2020. Of course, the first one is phishing, phishing, phishing. They're gonna continue to be very focused, very clever. And unfortunately, as we know, one click is all it takes for an organization to be compromised. The second one is rogue ads on websites where one of the ones we've seen recently are hand sanitizer and toilet paper where people are so desperate for these items, they think these ads are legitimate and they fall victim. The third one is ransom, where we've already seen several big ransomware attacks and those are gonna continue. Number four is unpatched systems. More and more servers are visible from the internet because of the effort to support a remote workforce and many of those systems haven't been up to date because IT and security are so focused on supporting the remote workforce, they haven't been keeping the systems up to date. And of course, the fifth one is data, not properly protected and encrypted. So just summarizing the top five threats, the top security threats for 2020, increased phishing attacks, rogue ads on websites, ransomware, unpatched systems, and data not properly protected and encrypted. Let's go ahead and look in detail at the top five threats for 2020. Phishing. Phishing attacks play off the fact when people get emotional. Effective phishing attacks have essentially two big components. There's an urgency that the person feels they have to act now, and there's an emotional component where the person isn't thinking. They just wanna click, click, click. And we've over the last five or six years have seen phishing attacks increase. But now with the epidemic and COVID-19, it's the perfect storm. Because let's face it, people are panicking, they're fearful, they're urgent, they're concerned. And emotional is probably an understatement to explain the current environment that we're in. So I can almost guarantee that if somebody received an email that said five of your coworkers positively tested for COVID-19 and the sub and the body said, here's additional information, find out if you've been in contact with these five employees, you are opening that attachment. Security, awareness, all those factors are out the door very quickly and you're opening that attachment. We're also seeing a lot of parents with their kids going back to school if you go in and get an email that looks like it came from your child's college or their school district that's saying new regulation for COVID-19 or all classes will be in person or all classes will be remote, anything that's gonna trigger an emotional response, once again, you can guarantee that people are going to be clicking on that attachment. So we always say awareness is key. Here's the problem. When you get very emotional and it gets very personal, I can sit there and tell you, don't click on attachments, don't click on attachments, don't click on attachments, and you're going to every single day of the week if it comes to your health and something you're fearful about. So what we need to do is create a new situation. And what I recommend 
is we've evaluated in my lab at Secure Anchor Consulting over 400 different specimens of malware tied to phishing attacks around COVID-19. 100% of them are for Windows operating systems. Now that doesn't mean it's not gonna change in the near future, but right now, not because it's more vulnerable, but because of the large install base, Windows computers are targeted the most. So my recommendation is to do what I do, is when you do a first pass of email, or you're surfing the web or anything like that, use a non-Windows simple device like an iPhone or an iPad. It has less chance of getting compromised. And even if the attackers start upping up their game and they start writing malware for iPads, if you have an iPad, which I have, that I only use for pre-screening. I only use for pre-screening my emails, surfing the web, doing research. So even if that device got compromised, there's no critical data on it. I don't store a lot of information. There's not anything private. There's not anything that would lead to my bank account. So it's fairly safe. And because I'm just using it for basic services and functionality, it could be re-imaged very quickly and very fast. So recognize that phishing attacks are going to increase, but user awareness is not going to get the job done. People are too emotional. People are too fearful and they're going to click even if you tell them not to. So we need a technical solution. You need to give them a separate computer and create an environment that allows them to be able to check email and surf the web in a safe environment. And that brings us to the number two top security threat, rogue ads on websites. We are seeing a lot of items go into scarcity. We've seen toilet paper, which I'll be honest with you, I don't understand that. Before COVID-19, did people not use toilet paper? I mean, seriously, I, I just thought toilet paper was something that you used and you needed. Why would all of a sudden epidemic require an increased usage of toilet paper, right? I can understand the hand sanitizer, right? I can even understand water or other products, but I, I just don't get the toilet paper. But the point is there was scarcity. There's still several items that are scarcity out there. And these attackers know that. So they're going to go in. And when you're in social media or all these other sites, they're going to be monitoring your activity. And if you've ever searched on Amazon for hand sanitizer or some of these items, you're going to start having these ads pop up. In stock hand sanitizer available 24 seven. We can ship overnight. And because once again, there's a scarcity and a demand, you're more likely to click on these ads for getting that these ads tied to these different sites don't have any verification or validation or security in place. Now, here's the real kicker with these. The real big scams associated with this top threat, you aren't going to use credit cards because if you use a credit card to pay for this and all of a sudden you don't get your product, you're not going to pay the credit card and you're going to go in and you're going to report it as fraud. So the trick is these sites, these rogue ad sites, they go in and say, because of processing and limitations, we're only accepting debit cards. And the reason for that is when you use a debit card to make a purchase, the money comes directly out of your account. And it's much harder for you to go in and try to file a false claim. And you're the one that's out the money. So my best advice for this top thread of the rogue ads, is not only to use a separate device because a lot of these rogue ads that have malware associated with them once again are targeted for windows not because windows is more vulnerable but because of the increase and the usage of windows systems and second don't use debit cards i know financial planners want you to use debit cards it's safer and it's better but if you're not sure if something is a scam or not best advice is don't buy it if you're desperate and you're going to, don't ever trust a site that's utilizing debit cards. Always utilize credit cards. And finally, utilize a non-Windows device like an iPad or an iPhone to do the web surfing. And that will help protect against the second threat of rogue ads. Third, ransomware. A lot of people around the world are out of work, looking for money, and cyber crime is big business. One of the number one drivers of cybercrime today is financially driven attacks. They want 
money. They need money. And ransomware is one of the best sources of that. So we've seen a huge increase in ransomware, not only targeting individuals where they're asking for two or $300 to get their data back, but also large companies anywhere from 40,000 up to 100,000 in ransom. Now, of course, the trick here is make sure that you back your data up. Make sure that you have a non-transparent backup that's not online. Because the problem is a lot of people have backups of their data that's done in real time, either individually or for their organization, and it automatically backs up with no password. Problem, if you get hit with ransomware, guess what? Anything you have access to or visibility to, the ransomware does. So now all of a sudden, that ransomware is gonna encrypt all of your backups and you're gonna lose all of your data and all of your information. Now, ransomware is typically delivered via rogue emails or websites. So if you listen to the advice I gave you of the first two security threats, phishing and rogue ads, that will go a long way with ransomware. So make sure that when you're surfing the web, checking email, don't ever do it from a computer that has your critical data or has access to your critical data. And then second with ransomware, make sure you're backing up your data and storing it offline or in a location that even if your computer gets impacted and everything you have visibility to gets encrypted and held ransom, you still have a secure backup that's offline, accessible, and you still have the ability to recover your data and your information. Number four, unpatch systems. Unpatched systems has always been a challenge, but here's the problem. With the epidemic literally overnight, companies had to support a remote workforce. All of a sudden, people were working from home, they weren't able to come into the office, and they needed to be able to access their data any place, anywhere, anytime. So companies either moved servers that were never intended to be accessible from the internet, accessible from the internet, or they allowed anybody to VPN in, in many cases with split tunneling, which in essence now makes those servers visible from the internet. One of the most common ways of breaking into servers and compromising systems is unpatched systems. An unpatched system is an accident waiting to happen. You have free tools out there that can exploit unpatched systems and break in very easily and very quickly. So it's important that organizations very quickly, they don't have a chief information security officer, hire one and put together a strategy for asset inventory. You need to make sure you understand all your servers that are visible from the internet, any systems that contain critical data and make sure those systems are patched, secured and up to date. And then finally, the fifth top security threat of 2020 is data not properly protected and encrypted. Remember, the difference between a major attack and a minor attack is not the system or the person that's broken into. It's the data that's compromised and how quickly you can detect the attack. If somebody breaks into a system and they get five records, that's not a big deal. But if they get 50 million records, that starts to become a big, big problem. So first, companies need to do a much better job of data inventory and data discovery. What is your critical data? Where is it located and how is it protected? Then the other big mistake that organizations are making is they're not encrypting their data correctly. They are going in and encrypting the information, but they're storing the key with the encrypted data. That's like taking the key to your house and putting it under your floor mat. It really doesn't protect you because somebody is gonna go up to your front door, lift up the floor mat and get the key. So you can never store your cryptographic keys with your encrypted data. So you wanna make sure you're doing data inventory, you're protecting, securing and minimizing the exposure. And then when you need to protect and encrypt your data, always store the keys on separate servers. The cryptographic keys are never stored with your critical data. So if you wanna stay one step ahead of the adversary, you wanna get your security program back in shape, focus on these top five security threats for 2020. Phishing, rogue ads on website, ransomware, unpatched systems, and data not properly protected and encrypted. 
And if you focus on those five areas, you could go a long way to protecting, securing, and locking down your organization. Because let's face it, you're under attack and cybersecurity is your responsibility. I am Dr. Eric Cole from Secure Anchor Consulting, and I'm on a mission to make cyberspace a safe place to live, work, and raise a family. And if we can help you assess your organization or properly protect against the threats that are out there, please visit us at www.secure-anchor.com. Set up a consultation, and we'd love to jump on a phone call with you and see how we can help you make your organization safe and secure.